Hello and welcome to part three of the 132nd Polar Lights Star Trek The Original Series Galileo 7 Shuttlecraft build-up. Today I'm going to show you uh, the installation of the interior. I'll continue from part two and the inclusion of figures and some enhancements on the lighting. Also I'll be sharing some tips as to what I did and how I did it as far as colors and how the hatches work, etc. So let's take a look at the Galileo. First thing, let's light it up. So underneath we have a hidden switch. Yeah, there she goes. So let's take a look inside the ship. There's the crew, there's the figures. Now what I did was I made the crew into the crew from the episode of the same name, the Galileo 7, by the inclusion of Yeoman Mears and Mr. Bulma, by using the excess heads that are provided in the 132nd bridge set. Now you're going to ask yourself, well, do the figures fit? No. The figures from the bridge set are too small. The bodies are too small. However, the heads, the heads are in scale with the bodies that are provided for the Polar Lights kit, the new Polar Lights kit, interior kit for the figures. So Yeoman Mears and Mr. Boma's head and Mr. Latimer's head is included. Mr. Gitano, you're gonna have to use one of the existing figures and convert them, which is what I did. So there you go, you can see them in there now. My hatch, exterior hatch, well, let's show you the interior hatch first. So we'll come back to that. Inside, you see the rear hatch of the Galileo. It's closed. Let's get a little focus in there, sorry. Now, to open it, we simply, and there we go. The rear hatch is now open and you can see the three tanks in the back, the lit, at the compartment and if you want to close the door we just tilt it close the door I was going to come up with some kind of ingenious magnetic way of closing the door but I felt it wasn't necessary on the exterior and we can see that the the door is held in place how's that done by a mini magnet so what we need to do is just lower the bottom door, take out the top, and through the magnet, by the magnet, holding the lower door, it locks the upper, it locks the upper hatch in position. A real easy fix. So there's the interior. With the figures, Mr. Bulma can be seen, Mr. Spock, Mr. Latimer, Yeoman Mears, Mr. Scott in the back, Mr. Gatano, Dr. McCoy in the very back. Of course, we have the rear impulse engines. Now, I've said this probably in every build video that I've done. I am a boring builder. I don't add lighting just for the sake of lighting. If it's your model, you can light up whatever you want. Feel free, have fun, that's what it's all about. Me, I have fun by lighting it as closely and painting it and, and uh, detailing it as closely as possible as to what the original miniature, full-size set, what have you, look like. So in the original series, the only thing that was lit in the rear was this. Not the remastered, I don't want to talk about that. This little red bar here, not lit, these are lit. You turn the ship around, you'll notice that my nacelles, the front of my nacelles are not lit. I'm not interested in what could have been, what should have been, what they wanted to do, not interested. What I wanted to do is to replicate what I saw on the screen. That's how I have fun. 
I know some of you have want to put lights in everything, and that's great. Have fun. Do it. Do it. <laughs> but me, again, I'm a boring, boring builder. So there's the finished kit with the Gal crew of the Galileo 7 in there. If I could do this with one hand, perhaps I could show you how I can close up the main hatch once again. A little difficult doing it one-handed, but there we go. It locks it into position. And there we go. Rear hatch closed inside the interior cabin. Let's talk about the colors now. Uh, Gary Kerr provided me color samples. Well, he provided swatches. He he matched up the color. Now, that word expert gets thrown around a lot, especially on these uh, YouTube videos by many a YouTuber and uh, model builder. Mr. Kerr is an expert in regards to the Star Trek world. And he provided me uh, color chips. Well, he provided me what color chips to purchase or get at my local Sherman Williams for the exterior hull and all the colors interior, which I'm going to share with you guys. Also, before we get to that, I just wanted to also say that I replaced the kick glass with, I don't know if you guys can see this, but with this glass here. This is just this uh, practice piece that I used and it's not cut right, but just to give you an idea, it's from Evergreen Scale Models, uh, item number 9006J-2 clear, 0 0.010 inch, inches thick, 0 0.25 millimeters. You can get that at your local hobby shop. That's what I use for the, for the viewport. Why did I do that? It's a personal preference. The kit supply ga glass is um, is adequate, it's good, and it's perfectly sufficient for what you're doing, but the, the glass has a tendency, the kit supply glass uh, becomes flush with these dividers, and in the original series and on the actual full-size mock-up, there's a, a sec another part, another hull in there where the, uh, the, the, the blast shields or collision shields would raise up and come down. So there's, there, the, the glass is actually set back a little bit. And I, someone asked me why is this accurate? Well, it, yes, it's accurate, but if I were to include a, uh, an interior, another hull in front there, and have it slide, it would, it would throw off the look of the interior of the of the model, and I didn't feel as though it was that relevant to do so. So that's why we use that. Also, the magnets used throughout the model are these. I've had these for a while. They're great. They're super tiny. They're inconspicuous. I forgot where I got them from, but uh, that's the size. That's what I use for the hatch, and I also used it for the uh, door, the access plate on the floor of the Galileo 7. So let's talk about what colors you guys can use. Again, I apologize that I did not write my ratios down or my formulas. Uh, but I do have the next best thing, again, courtesy of uh, our friend Gary Kerr, who, who knows what he's talking about as far as what colors are. Now, look, you can paint this any color you want. Uh, I'm doing this because how I have fun, well, how I enjoy the hobby is by, again, getting it as close to the original as possible and color-wise and look-wise and all that. I appreciate that kind of stuff. Some of you may not. Some of you are rattle can guys, and, and that's okay. That's okay. That's no, not a problem. But everything on this model, and all of my models, is airbrushed and custom-mixed. I use Tamiya and Vallejo paints, but for this, I used, I mixed uh, Tamiya paints. So let's, let's take a look at the 
let's take a look at the color charts real quick. So here is the uh, exterior colors, Sherman Williams uh, color chips. Go to your local Sherman Williams, pick them up. Do what I did, and uh, I used Tamiya paints to mix them. The two exterior colors. Here are the interior colors. Again, Sherman Williams paint chips. And uh, have fun mixing them up. Or with you rattle can guys, you can try and match them to whatever rattle can you think is close enough. But again, thanks to Gary Kerr for providing this information. And there we have it. The completed 132nd Paul Lights Galilee 7. The next installment a part four won't be for some time as that will be the finished diorama and I am just way too busy to get involved in it with that at the moment. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you you uh, can use any, some of the information that I provided for your own build. Have a good time with it. It's a great kit. And as always, thanks for stopping by.